the fact is that the, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, um, Mela Zenawi, was uh, the, 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 the lead spokesman. But the problem is he has a country to run and a country that has some problems. And so he doesn't have the 100% of his time to devote to it that the ministers of the environment of all of the big democracies, or in fact China or India have, have whose only focus is on that. And so Miles Zenawi did a tremendous job, but what you have to have is under him a person of equal stature uh, who can in fact bring Africa together. Um, the second thing is, of course, Africa has to begin its work on this. Um, much, much earlier. There are divisions within every country. In Canada, there are divisions. But the fact is that they start to discuss them and negotiate them years ahead of these kinds of meetings. Whereas in Africa, it's usually left to the last minute. Well, I think that climate change is a huge threat to Africa. Africa is not a cause of climate change, but it suffers it. Uh, more than any, the poor always suffer from these kinds of changes, and Africa has got more poverty, more fragile states, more states in conflict. But it really is the effect of drought on its ability to produce food, and, and food security is a huge issue in, in, uh, in poorer countries, and certainly uh, in the case of, of Africa. I mean, if you take a look at Europe, uh, would Europe be the power that it is if it was still a whole series of independent countries? Well, Africa is 53 countries, small, shallow markets with a couple of large countries like South Africa and Nigeria. If there's any continent that needs to come together, um, it, is, uh, it, it is Africa. About three years ago, there was an African-China summit. The 48 countries of sub-Saharan Africa went to China and they had a summit with the Chinese and the discussions went fairly well. But at one point on the stage there were the 48 heads of government from Africa and then on the other side came in one man, Hu Jintao, the president of China. You had one man representing a billion people and you had 48 countries representing 700 million people. Where do you think the power lay? And that's why I believe the common market is so important, because if instead of that one person representing China, he had been faced with one person representing not a political union, but, but, but an economic union of 750 to a billion people, just think where the power would have lied. And then to ask yourself this, in the year 2030, our China's population is going to start to flatten out. Africa's is going to continue. It's the youngest population in the world. 2050, Africa is going to be 2 billion people. Think what that would have represented. And that's why the common market is so important. The Congo Basin Forest uh, is an area twice the size of France. It's made up of 10 countries, um, and it is the largest tropical rainforest in France, second largest in the world. It's really the world's second lung. But unlike Brazil, or unlike in, even in Asia, where they've got their act together, where in fact they're, they're saying, if you want us to maintain these trees, then there's going to have to be credit compensation from the rest of the world. We've got to work together to preserve the trees and alleviate poverty. That wasn't happening in Africa. And so the African countries came together. They formed an organization, but they were not well funded. And they were having trouble getting pushing. And so uh, Great Britain and the United Kingdom formed a $200 million fund. And they asked when Gary Mathai, who was the former uh, winner of the Nobel Prize from, from Kenya, and myself, to chair it, to essentially try to bring the Congo Basin Forest to the world's attention, but also with $200 million to be able to fund projects that will preserve the forest.